Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to replace the automatic transmission fluid in your second generation Tundra covering model years 2007 through 2013. Now this procedure will likely also cover the newer Tundras covering from years 2014 and present day. So let's get started. So on the Tundra 4.6, at least on the 2010 and newer models that have the updated transmission oil cooler, um, this is assuming you've got the tow package, that the oil cooler return line is actually the lower of the two hoses on the front ATF cooler. So there's a top hose, there's a bottom hose, and then it comes through this bend, and then I've attached a half inch hose on a hose clamp. We're gonna have that empty out into a graduated drain pan. One of the first steps we gotta do when we're servicing our transmission is to ensure that the oil cooler uh, on the transmission, the thermostatic valve is actually opened up. This can be accomplished by using a screwdriver and pressing down on the plunger valve and then using a paper clip, passing it through two holes in the valve body to keep the plunger secured in place. With the thermostatic cooler valve, uh, in bypass mode. Now need to make sure that we have the ability to fill the transmission before we drain any fluid out. And you can actually find the tranny fill plug on the driver's side rear of the transmission. So here's the drain plug for the tranny. There's the check level plug that's a five millimeter hex. And then towards the back, you'll see way up there that uh, there's that um, 24 mil fill plug. We need to make sure that we take a rag and we wipe away all traces of dirt from that plug area so that when you crack the plug open and then stick your filler hose in that you're not jamming dirt into the transmission. Taking a 24 mil socket, you can basically go in here It's not very tight. So pull that fill plug out. That she says WS right right here on the plug. I don't know if you guys can see that. It says world standard. Okay, and it's got a little rubber o-ring um, that just needs to be cleaned and you can just reinstall this afterwards. So I'm going to use a graduated drain pan right here. We're going to use a 14 mil socket. And we're going to now crack the drain pan open. While the transmission continues to drain from the pan, just crack open this level check plug with a five mil uh, hex socket. And it too uses a little uh, crush washer, so that's gonna have to be replaced. Okay, so I've put a new crush washer onto our drain bolt right here. Reinstall the drain plug, not the check plug, but the drain plug. Just snug. Loosely reinstall the check plug without the crush washer, just temporarily. Just gonna screw that on lightly with my finger. So this is the tranny fluid that got pulled out of the transmission. It's about 2.8 liters or so, so it's a bit short of three liters. Excellent condition, it's got 80,000 kilometers of, you know, relative light duty use. Towed a pop-up camper for a number of years, um, but overall it's in great condition. Doesn't smell burnt at all, but pay attention. Okay, so 2.8 liters, if you guys can see those numbers on here. So we're gonna put three liters back into the transmission and then we're gonna get our helper to start the truck and run it until approximately 2.8 liters of transmission fluid is pushed out from the transmission cooler's fluid return line. All right guys, so I've routed a hose down from the top of the engine bay and then very carefully making sure that the end is nice and clean with no dirt I'm going to stick that into the hole of the transmission so we can fill it we're going to use our funnel and just pour the transmission fluid into our transmission until I get three liters down this funnel. Back under the truck, you can see 
that fluid is going in. I'm gonna try to unkink that hose to see if I can speed this up a little bit. So what we've done here is that we've basically put in slightly more transmission fluid back into the transmission case um, than what came out. I've got a helper in the vehicle that's gonna start the car, put the car into reverse, count to five, neutral, count to five, drive, count to five, and then neutral, back to count to five, and so on, and then put it back into park. And then when I get close to the 2.8 liter mark on my graduated pan here, that uh, we're gonna shut the engine off. And the whole idea here is that we're trying to draw in fresh transmission fluid and pushing it through the torque converter and all the transmission passages. So you can see the oil coming out. It doesn't come shooting out at 300 miles an hour. It just comes out slowly. So right now the transmission is using its own pump to pump the transmission fluid, fluid through. Shut her off. Okay, so here on my pan, I've now drained out 2.8 liters of fluid. Since we removed 2.8 liters of transmission fluid from the ATF cooler lines, that the transmission sump is almost completely empty. Therefore, we need to refill the oil sump with three additional liters of fresh fluid. All right, guys, so now that we have filled the transmission sump with three liters of fresh fluid, we're going to do round two of the cycle again. The fluid is still quite dark. Shut it off! I've now drained out 2.8 liters of fluid. We're going to fill it up and do round three. Repeat the process as how we've done in previous refilling steps by pouring in three liters of WS ATF fluid into the transmission's oil sump. Okay guys, so this is gonna be the last round of flushing out the oil and the transmission. Now one thing to mention on this particular round is that we're actually only gonna drain out about two and a half liters. I wanna deliberately leave a little bit of extra fluid in the transmission just because I don't wanna run into a situation where I don't have enough oil. So instead of waiting for it to hit around the 2.8 mark, I'm gonna stop it at the two and a half line on my pan. I said, you wanna leave a little bit left in the tranny, so. Shut it off. Disconnect the temporary drain line and reinstall the ATF cooler lines to the transmission cooler assembly. Just make sure that you double check your oil cooler hoses, that the clamps are put back into place and any spilled oil is cleaned up. This fourth and final round will be the last time that we fill our transmission's oil sump. Use your remaining three liters of WS fluid and fill the transmission. Now, in order to get our transmission into temperature monitoring mode, we either have to use a Toyota TechStream tool, or in my case, a Simpleton paperclip jumper. And we're going to insert it into pins four and 13 on the OBD2 connector. So I've inserted my paperclip into pins four and 13. So just to reiterate, slot one, two, three, four. So it's pin four, and then it goes five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so four and 13. Now, this connector in my truck is mounted upside down, but you always count from the widest part as pin one on the top row. So with the pins shorted on our connector, start the truck. And then once the truck is started, you'll notice that the cruise, the ABS light, the check engine and traction control indicators are blinking in an alternating manner. The next step is to actually put the transmission into temperature monitoring mode. And we can accomplish this by toggling the transmission between neutral and drive several times in succession within a six second window until the D indicator is illuminated, telling you that you have successfully entered temperature monitoring mode. Applying the brakes, neutral, and then we're gonna go back and forth between neutral and drive. And you see, the drive light came on and then went back out. We can put the car back into park and then wait for that D indicator to illuminate, which tells us that it is in the correct temperature range to check the fluid level. 
Now the drive indicator light is not illuminated, which means that the transmission oil temperature is below 37 degrees centigrade. When the D is solidly illuminated, it means the fluid is between 37 and 44 degrees centigrade, which is the ideal temperature to check the transmission fluid level. And if the D indicator is blinking, it means that the transmission oil temperature is greater than 44 degrees centigrade, which means you cannot properly check the fluid level and will need to cool the transmission fluid down for several hours and then repeating this procedure. Okay guys, so finally, moment of truth. About 23 minutes into idling, the D light finally came on. We're gonna go under the car now and crack open the check oil plug. Okay, so just gonna open that up. And let fluid come out. And while that's coming out, we're gonna get our crush washer ready on our plug. So that's still a pretty fast trickle. It's gotta be steady and slow. Right about there is is good. Replace the oil level check plug the moment that the oil goes from a steady stream and slows down to a slight trickle. You don't want to drain more beyond that, otherwise the transmission will be underfilled. I'm gonna take our socket and tighten that down. Nice and snug, not too tight. We can now shut off the engine. Once we have completed the fluid check procedure, remove the jumper pin from the OBD2 connector. So this is the excess ATF fluid that got drained out from the check plug. Notice how much brighter red it is compared to the original stuff that came out. That's a substantial difference there. So um, this is why we didn't want to drain out um, the exact amount on that last purge. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we had extra fluid like this in the tranny so that we can assure ourselves that it's not underfilled and then we'd have to crawl underneath and try to fill the damn thing again. This is so much more work so you're better off to overfill it slightly and then let it come out of that uh, overflow hole. Here is the transmission fill plug. You'll notice it's got this rubber o-ring on it and that's actually part of the plug so you don't actually need to replace it. But make sure it's clean and we're gonna lubricate it with some transmission oil. Just making sure that's lubricated and then we're just gonna snug that onto the transmission housing. Let's get our fill plug installed. Then we use our ratchet and just snug that up. Not too tight. So once we've snugged up our fill plug, we're gonna take our screwdriver, push down on the thermostatic valve and then remove the paper clip, super important because if you keep this open, the transmission is never going to be able to warm up properly when you're driving. Alright guys, so this will tell you how stark that difference is on the ATF. So when we did the initial drain from the oil pan, we just dumped that. Then we filled it up with 3 liters of fresh fluid and then purged out that first bit inside the transmission torque converter. That's pretty dark. And then we then refilled it again with 3 liters a second time and then purge it out again. And you can see that it's getting lighter. But where you see the real difference is that on the third purge, which is this one right here. Look how much lighter that is by comparison. Well, there you guys have it. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And thanks for watching.